Seriously? Welcome back, friends. Happy Monday. How you doing out there? Well, I hope. Um, I've got a couple things to talk about today. Uh, the first of which is that I have a podcast recommendation. Do you listen to podcasts? Most people do these days. Um, but this one is from Tim Ferriss, one of the, you know, one of the bigger podcasts out there. And he pretty regularly talks to Dr. Peter Atia. Uh, they're friends. I think Peter's his doctor, actually, which would make sense. But um, the talk that they have really kind of complements what I've been talking about. And compliment is probably not the right word, you know, as I am not a doctor and he is. But they go into a lot of different things. And Peter's kind of the thrust of his practice is aging and again not only living longer but making sure that those additional years are productive and that means you know keeping yourself durable and viable mostly through maintaining strength um, but they talk about some other things as well fasting they do spend a little bit of time on rocking which is a fancy way of saying you know you're carrying a heavy backpack while you're walking. Uh, I've done that a bit in the past. and I'm kind of keen to do a little more, but it's an interesting conversation. Tim tells a story about uh, a friend of his, a mentor, I guess, who's in his 90s, who is in incredible shape and still plans vacations around spending the least amount of time possible in an automobile. So it's an interesting talk. I highly recommend it. The Tim Ferriss podcast. You don't need a link for that. Uh, any Google search can will take you there. He is uh, known far and wide. The second thing I have to talk about today is a, a, a little uh, more difficult. Um, and I'm going to try to stay on point and not get carried away. As you all know, I've been a proponent of Surly Bicycles for a very long time. Uh, I don't think I would ever fall into the category of somebody who sold the most Surleys, but I've certainly been very outspoken about my support of the brand and what they do. And I got a message from uh, a viewer, I guess, for lack of a better word, um, and we were talking about the bike business, or he was asking me questions about the bike business. And then the next message I got from him said that Surly has started pre-cutting steer tubes on complete bikes. What? They've started pre-cutting steer tubes on complete bikes. Now, there are many reasons to buy a Surly, but in my mind, one of the big ones was the fact that as long as you got ahead of the bike shop in the buying process, you could lay as many spacers as you wanted to within reason under that stem. Or if you were like me and you didn't cut the steer tube, you waited until you sold the bike and then you cut it, it gave the customer the power to set that bike up the way they wanted to. You could almost say that they were going to make it their own. The, the rationale as far as, and I've confirmed this now with somebody that I know inside, and this is happening. It's already happening on the new preamble and bridge clubs. Um, and the reasoning behind this is apparently to cut down on packaging waste. 
Okay. You're going to get 40 millimeters worth of spacers on flat bar bikes like the Preamble and the Bridge Club, and you're going to get 60 mil on drop bar bikes. Now, 40 mil on my Bridge Club wouldn't be enough. I think I'm running 50 and the bars are still slightly below the saddle, and I've got short legs. So what does this mean? for somebody who's built opposite me with long legs and a short torso. Well, it means the bars are never going to be higher than the saddle. It, you know, you might be able to then bump them up to the bigger size, which means now you're going to have to probably buy a shorter stem. I just don't understand it. Um, and maybe, I mean, I know there's at least one person that works for the brand that watches these videos and maybe they'll reach out because it's got to be bigger than just reduced packaging waste. It's a cost savings measure, which I get, but I can almost guarantee you that cost savings and that increased margin isn't going to trickle down to the dealers. <sighs> Steer tubes will remain uncut on frame sets, which makes perfect sense. So you're going to say, well, what's the big deal, Chris? Just build the bike. Well, the big deal is it's, it's going to cost probably 40% more than a complete. It always does. And moreover, if all of a sudden now you're faced with the opportunity, you know, the, the eventuality or the reality of having to build a bike from the frame up and the increased cost that that means, and you were looking at a bridge club or a ghost grappler or an ogre, well then if you've got to spend that extra money anyway, that puts like a half a dozen different bikes now into contention. Right? Why wouldn't you buy a hardtack? Or a Velo, something from Velo Orange or Soma or a, a bossy hogs back? I mean, that's just four off the top of my head. I don't know, look, the people that run these brands, I'm sure, are smarter than I am, with regards to business anyway, but I don't know that they really thought this through. So my question to you is, were you going to buy a Surly Complete this year? I'm not talking about if I sell these seven things, you know, or maybe one day. I'm like, money, do you have money in hand? And were you planning on buying a Surly Complete bike this year? If so, does this new information change that? You know, were you really looking at that new preamble? Was that a bike that interested you? Does it still interest you with the knowledge now that it's only going to come with 40 millimeters of spacers? That's the question. Certainly put the answers down in the comments. Um, but also, I would reach out to your local dealer. This has not been made uh, very public, as far as I know. And certainly my little YouTube channel isn't going to change much of that. But I would say, you know, reach out to your dealer. And uh, if there is displeasure, voice that. Because the people at Surly need to understand that I think this decision in the short term might save them some money, but in the long term, I don't think it's going to be very good. They may have to change the hashtag, too, uh, from surly make it your own to hashtag good luck trying to make it your own. Feels like end times in the bike business. I hope you're all well. Thanks for watching. And I hope something good happens to you today.